A dark night in a city that knows how to keep its secrets. But on the 12th floor of the Acme building, one man is trying to find the answers to life's persistent questions. Guy Noir, Private Eye. It was November, and my landlady was giving me a hard time for the September rent already. Hey, I know you're Pounding in Pounding on the door. Come on, guy. Just as his cold friend moved in in snow in Minnesota. And my health insurance company wrote to me, suggesting I downgrade to a more basic plan called life insurance. <laughs> it just all made me think about Florida and about my old pal Slats Moran at the Ocean View Country Club in St. Augustine who had invited me to come visit him any time, and here it was, any time. Hey, guy, come on down. Love huh? to see you. Huh? Oh. Yeah? Huh? Well, I'd like to see you. How's the, uh, how's the weather down there? Perfect. Uh -huh. How's the golf? Never better. Okay. Sort of have a little phobia about uh, alligators, you know. I mean, you know, we hear stories up here, gators, you know, sneaking up behind people, chewing their pants oh, off. Oh, no, 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 no. Alligators aren't a big problem. Mostly they're attracted to pacemakers. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. They can sense pacemakers a mile away. It drives them wild, and uh, they come tearing up. They'll rip a person to pieces. Oh, really? So, so you've had alligator attacks then? Yeah, yeah, but most Floridians know that you can repel an alligator by taking out your teeth. Oh. Oh, I see. Yeah, see, here's how it works. You take out your teeth, you put your toupee between your teeth, and you lie on your back with your legs in the air. The alligators won't touch you. Yeah, well, I'm not surprised. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, come on down. It'd be good to see you again. So I went down there, and it was good. It was very summery, even though it was November. And I was offered a part-time job to dress up as a pirate and walk around and be obnoxious. Hi, me hearty. Hi, ahoy, our wenches. What say we keel haul these scurvy dogs and have us some grog? Right. Sell trinkets to the land lovers, right. eh? What you, say? Uh, you have uh, bad breath, sir. If you ha. Just... Ha. Ha. I went off and I played golf at the Ocean View, and it was so good to pick up a golf club again. And there. You know something? The secret of golf is taking a break. I hadn't played in 34 years, and my game was... Fantastic. <laughs> Golf pros won't tell you that, but the secret of improving your game is not to play. It's beautiful. Oh, oh thank you. Hi, that was a beautiful birdie. Oh, thank you. Really nice form. You alone care to play around? My name is Jaguar. Uh -huh. I live in a house by the beach with a tennis court, if you prefer to volley. She was beautiful. You could tell she had been adored all of her life, and she had sort of gotten used to it. She was like the Mona Lisa, except ambulatory. She <laughs> wore yellow plaid shorts and green golf shoes, and her clubs were German-made. Titanium. We headed for the first tee, and and then slats hey, came there up. There he is. Hiya, guy. Oh, Mrs. Murdoch. Oh, yes. I didn't see you standing there. Yeah, hi, slats. Uh, listen, Mr. Murdoch asked me to come and get you and tell you he wants you aboard the jet in 20 minutes. Oh, Rupert said that? He's just bought the New York Times. Oh. He wants you to come with him to New York. <laughs> well, la-da-da. Maybe he could just come and tell me himself. Well, he's over on the 17th just finishing up a round. I'll go call you limousine. Don't worry about it. You, um, you were married to Rupert Murdoch? Yeah, I was going to tell you later. You mean the, the Rupert Murdoch, uh, the yeah. owner of Fox News and uh, the Wall Street Journal? Yeah. I, I thought he was married to... Yeah, a, he was. Oh. She was his fourth wife. I'm number six. I see. So uh, how did you... Oh, I was his personal trainer. Uh-huh. Yeah, I held his ankles while he did his sit-ups. Uh-huh. And then one day he sat up and asked me to marry him. Oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> So, I think I read about the wedding. Oh, yes. It was a big story for about a day. 23-year-old mm. <laughs> gymnast marries 89-year-old media tycoon. Prenuptial agreement settles on $1.5 billion in case of death or divorce. Hmm. So, 89? Yep. I, 89? I thought he was 79. Oh, well, we don't insist on a lot of accuracy in our home. Oh, I see. Oh. So... 
It must be exciting to uh, be married to Rupert Murdoch. Yeah. Be married to the uh, most powerful man in America. Uh, powerful? The man is unable to pull on his own suppose. Oh, really? The man can't unscrew the lid off the marmite. Well. Anyway, how about we play some golf, okay? Well, shouldn't you go board that jet for New York? Oh, look at him. There he is over there. A man his age should not be wearing shorts, you know what I mean? She set her ball down on the tee. And she hit a hard, low drive that hooked about 90 degrees and hit her husband sitting in his golf cart, which suddenly took off down the fairway and through a pond and through a chain link fence and onto the freeway and through a plate glass window of a drugstore and into the section of lotions. Wow. Oh. My God. Oh my goodness. Yes. I just struck my beloved husband in the left ear with a 100 mile per hour golf ball and sent him careening through heavy traffic in a plate glass window into a drugstore. How can an 89-year-old man survive well, such an experience? Hop into my uh, golf cart here, and I'll drive you over there. We'll oh, find out, okay? okay? All right. I can imagine you wonder why I'm not more upset. Well, some people just have more self-control. Yeah, hang on here, hang on. I'm going okay. to cross the freeway right here. Look out. Oh. Stop. Oh. Okay, going over the curb yeah. here. Oh. Hold on. Oh. Great, okay. <laughs> Here's our drugstore right here. Yes. Wow, he went right through that window. Oh, my. Okay, um, here, oh, news, news, news oh, photographers oh, are here, Mr. No, 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 Let us through, let the ladies through here. Make way, coming, coming through, coming through, coming through. Okay, okay, we're, we're past the photographers. Now. Oh, good, good, okay. good. How do I look? Grief stricken? Close enough, that's okay. okay. Oh. There he is. Look at him lying there on the floor Whoa. by the emollient bottles. My goodness. I'm a kangaroo down sport. I'm a kangaroo down. Got uh, Mrs. Murdoch I'm here. Make way here, coming through here. Uh, doctor, uh, this is uh, Mrs. Murdoch here. Yes, I'm Dr. Cranus. Ernest Cranus came over from the ER. Oh, how is he, doctor? Will he live? Well, I'm afraid he suffered a complete loss of personal identity. Uh -huh. Uh, Let's see what I'm, is that's there what I'm saying. anything that can be done, Doctor? Well, we can attempt a, a brain implant, but it would be very, very dangerous. Oh, I see. Um, let's do the brain implant. Why not? Okay, sign in right here, Ms. Murdoch. Right. I noticed what looked like a hearing aid in Mr. Murdoch's left ear. But it wasn't a hearing aid, it was a tiny radio transmitter. I palmed it when nobody was looking. And I went back to the golf course, and I found the ball she had hit that clobbered Mr. Murdoch. And I saw it was not a regulation golf ball, there was a seam around the middle. I turned it, and it opened, and there was a tiny gyroscope that was tuned to the radio transmitter and that directed the flight of the ball straight into Mr. Murdoch's ear. I headed for the hospital, where there was a crowd of reporters waiting by the door. Excuse me, excuse me. Yes, sir, yes, sir. This, uh, this is where Mr. Murdoch was taken? Uh, yeah, he's in there now. And his wife? Yeah, she's there with him. Okay, so he was going to have an operation? Yeah, I didn't hear about that. And I heard he was going to get a brain implant. Uh, what's that? Well, they inject your brain with brain matter from another person so you can regain intellectual function. Oh, I, I don't know. Okay. I don't know. I, don't I walked down the hall past the ER. And I looked for the VIP waiting room, and, and there she was. Jaguar, hi. Oh. Me, Guy. Miss, uh, yes, Mr. Noir, Guy, of course. <laughs> Good of you to come see me in my hour of grief. I hope we get to play that round sometime. Uh -huh. You are sexy, you know that? You big, tall hunk of man meat. <laughs> Where are you from, anyway? I'm from up north. Oh, hey. You show me up north, I'll give you down south, if you know what I mean. Ba-boom, ba-boom. How was uh, Mr. Murdoch? Did he get the operation? Oh, uh, 
yes, so they found a donor. I see somebody who died in a car crash. Uh, oh, I, no, no, hello, no a man who walked in off the street and donated some brain tissue. Yeah. It's very simple, really. We, we simply use a needle to take out two milligrams of brain tissue and implant those in the patient. And now he's up, walking and talking. Really? A, a, a brain tissue donor just walked in here? Yeah, he has a very nice man named uh, Ira Glass. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Glass? Yeah, Ira. Ira, ever hear of him? I think so, yeah. yeah I hadn't. He said he's from Chicago. Oh. oh, look, here comes Mr. Murdoch now. This is really just sort of unbelievable. You know what? In chapter two, I've got to call up Glenn Beck, get him straightened out about this whole tea party thing. <laughs> Cutting taxes on the top 2% while you take away people's health care, that's just not right. <laughs> My people are way out of line on all of that. So, uh, so you're getting right back on the saddle, huh, Mr. Murdoch? Huh? The fox is a smart animal. <laughs> so why do we have these dodos and bird brains? <laughs> O'Reilly, Hannity, Palin, where did they come from? I've got to get to New York. Go to NYC. Straighten these people out. Huh? By the way, who are you? Who, me? Uh, yes. uh, uh, the name's Noir, sir. Guy Noir. Where are you from? I'm from St. Paul. St. Paul. Right. Gene McCarthy was from St. Paul. Great man. You ever know him? I know him pretty well, yeah. Then I'm going to put you in charge of Fox News. Uh-huh. Get out there. Tell those people to start telling the truth. Oh! with me to the Caribbean and I'll teach you scuba diving. Oh, scuba know. skinny diving. Boy, that's huh? a very difficult choice. Yeah. Pursuing the truth or pursuing you. Oh, huh? well, don't take too long making up your mind. I mean, there was Mr. Murdoch offering me the power to change people's minds and Jaguar offering me the chance to be ecstatically happy in a warm place. Do the right thing, Mr. Noir. Together, you and I can make this a better world. Mm, together, you and I can enjoy the world there already is. One in one half billion goes a long way towards finding happiness. Uh, I'm planning to donate a billion and a half to public radio news. What? Travel fellowships. We'll send reporters around the world. I just want to take a long trip around you, guy. Around and up and down. I headed for the airport. I was still unsure whether to go to the Caribbean or go to New York and take over Fox News. Somehow, I wound up on a plane back to St. Paul, Minnesota, and arrived in a snowstorm. Took a cab to my apartment. I had to scrape the ice off the windows and turn on the heat. <laughs> Didn't get really warm until she called me. Yeah, this is Guy Noir. Hi, baby. Sorry we didn't get together. Where are you, Jaguar? Oh, I'm here with Ira in Barbados. Barbados? Yeah, you sound surprised. So was I. Wow, hello. What a guy. A dark night in a city that knows how to keep its secrets. But on the 12th floor of the Acme Building, one man is still trying to find the answers to life's persistent questions. Guy Noir, private eye. Sue Scott, Tim Russell, Mr. Fred Newman. Let's talk for just a moment here about sound effects as a career choice for your child. Many children become fascinated with making realistic sounds, starting with everybody's favorite sound effect, which is passing gas, of course. Oops, excuse me. And including household pets. And pets passing gas, of course. Yes. Gradually, a child learns to do guns. From those war movies, you pick up other sound effects. Dive, dive. And from National Geographic specials, you pick up your own ideas. <laughs> and pretty soon you start to think to yourself, could I do this for a living? Well, um, does it require special talent to make a living in the sound effects field? Yes, indeed it does. It's simple to do chickens, of course. Cows are easy. And cows. Pigs are no problem. Cows passing gas, that's more difficult. 
On the other hand, if you're able to do music, and if you can do a combination of music and dance, if you can do music performed in duet by animals, If you can do music with animals dancing. Then maybe you have something there. Well, uh, is the field of sound effects open to women? No, it's That's not. No, oh. no, it's not open to women. Because there are sound effects that girls cannot make. Girls cannot do a beer can being open. They can't do a good golf swing. They can't do a golf shot that, say, hits a cow. <laughs> or one that hits a cow and makes a cow pass gas. <laughs> Girls are not able to do rockets, I'm afraid. Or do jet planes going over, so... Where can my child get instruction in the art of sound effects? I'm glad you asked. The Fred Newman School of Audio Realism, Box 101 Ansonia Station, New York City, has often been called the Harvard of sound effects. It's at the Fred Newman School that you move into the major leagues of sound effects, learning to do the all-important nose hum. Moving on from there to the fly on the windowsill. and the aquarium and the opening of the dog food can Oh, uh, well how much does it cost to send my child to the Fred Newman school? It costs $35,000 a year payable in advance in cash in a paper bag but you learn the secrets of a top professional. How to do a drain in a summer cabin. How to do a car battery that's drained. And Professor Newman teaches you on the basis of personal experience how to do babies. Professor Newman does the does the, the colicky, the fussy baby? Does the colicky baby with the gas and the hiccups? He does the jungle baby, the wild baby that makes you wonder if he's descended from you. The, he does the accusatory baby. He does the baby who is going down and taking you with him. It's the Fred Newman School of Audio Reality. Send for a course catalog today, 50 cents in coin. And send that to... That address, once again, of the Fred Newman School is... Fred Newman, it's the name to trust when it comes to sound effects. Fred Newman. Yo, 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 yo. You cut your lips loose, you know you got the juice. If you muse, you snooze, you lose. Let your lips stay loose, excuse the blues. Gotta light your fuse, let me introduce mouth sounds. Yeah, mouth sounds. Say it loud in the crowd, mouth sounds. Party in your mouth, wrap your lips around mouth sounds. Ah, <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Chance of showers. <laughs> it's a long high ball, and it looks like it's gonna be. Yo, 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 yo.